McCormick, CEO of Celtic Fish and your host of Geek Speak, sponsored by Datto. Thank you for listening at 1060 AM KFOY or on the web at americamatters.us. Now let's get to the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. This is Kenny McCormick, and today I have a returning guest. I think this is my first returning guest ever. I was really excited to have him, Patrick Harris. Last time we had him on, we were talking about his upcoming book, which is now out. Woohoo! Yeah! Right? And, oh my God, Sorry. that would be amazing. <laughs> now, I wish we had fireworks. We need to get fireworks, Shinimal, in there. Just make Yeah, load them for me, and I'll put them on. Oh, right. Send it to me on MP3. <laughs> I will do that. We just need them in the station, you know, like little poppers. Yeah, okay. That's that won't scare I'll do anybody. That. <laughs> it's not meant to scare anyone. It's meant to uh, appease me and all our wonderful people on Facebook Live. Hi, everyone. And I think YouTube, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. They hate us sometimes. So, hi, everybody in digital world. But anyways, Patrick, it's good to have you back. Thank you, Kenny. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for being here. One, you helped me stall for time. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, how much time do I have? We have an hour. Oh, terrific. But in 12-minute increments, in three breaks, I always screw it up. So it's like a Smallville episode. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God, I love Smallville. Anyways, you remember the rapid-fire questions? I do. So for those people who sucked at not listening to me back in the day when you first came on for my 30-minute show. Today, we're going to ask the same question so they know. Terrific. All right. What is your full name? Patrick Harris. Patrick Harris. And what is your business name? Business name. Author Patrick Harris. Author Patrick Harris. <laughs> Got it. Uh, what is your profession? Uh, so Obviously, author. Author. Write books. I've been writing since high school, but I also work uh, full-time as a sales rep for a title and escrow company. And which company would that be? Stewart Title. Just Stewart today? Yes, just Stewart. Okay. Uh, we, we recently got purchased, so oh, we had a name change, and it was all sorts of fun. Weren't you Western still when? That Most likely, yep. Uh, Last time? Uh, we yeah. were Western Title until the beginning of this year, right about February or March. And then uh, Stewart Title had purchased us, so we transferred our name. And it's uh, now Stewart Title of Northern Nevada. Nice. Yeah, it always confuses me. We're in another networking group together, everyone out there, and we tease them consistently about <laughs> name changes. I think since you've been in the group, what, a year and a half, two years now? Yeah. Uh, we, we should just start calling me the uh, the company formerly known as. Just right. insert the blank. We should just put a symbol. Yeah, just symbol. Like Prince. There you go. Or Queen or whatever his name was. I don't remember. I'm not a music person. <laughs> I'm a geek. Uh, previous kinds of jobs. Previous kinds of jobs. Let's see. Uh, so growing up, I helped uh, help my buddy out on his grandparents' ranch. Uh, my dad was in mining, so did a couple summers at the mines, uh, working in quarry selection, uh, working through data, all sorts of fun stuff like that. And then, uh, let's see, through college, I did writing with uh, the UNR Nevada Today paper. And then uh, after college, started working for a title and escrow company. And been there ever since? Been there ever since. Coming on seven years. Good, good. They probably love you. We'll we'll see. I hope so. They keep me employed, so that's a good sign. Good. I hope they keep you employed, because I like you in my group. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, tell me about your family. Uh, let's see. So, uh, my wife, Melissa, uh, we've been married for, gosh, six years, coming up on seven in May of next year. Uh, and let's see. So, she grew up here in Reno. Minogue, uh, her family is here, so a lot of her family stayed around. My family uh, has kind of jumped around with mining, so they were in uh, Nevada and Elko for a while, which is where I grew up, in Spring Creek, and now they have retired to Cheyenne, Wyoming, and my siblings live in Denver, so family all over the place. Nice. Now, look at the beautiful camera, give her pretty eyes, and say, hi, hon. Hi, hon. <laughs> Thank you. Very awkward. My wife will very much appreciate that. Oh, good. Yeah. I love making you feel awkward. Uh, You can't see my ears, so it's even better. My ears turn bright red. 
Well, your face is bright red right now. Oh, great. So just transfer. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> You're on the radio and Facebook. So Terrific. no one's going to Nobody knows. Yeah, no one knows. Uh, favorite superhero? Favorite superhero. Gosh. And why? Uh, when I was growing up, it was Superman. Um, I always thought that was pretty cool. Nowadays, um, Superman doesn't really stand for the same things he did. So probably Spider-Man. Spider-Man's pretty cool. I like Batman. I was like, uh, I think that was Batman, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. My five-year-old knows that. You should know that. Okay. <laughs> Love you, Kieran, by the way. That's my youngest. Um, What are your hobbies? Obviously, writing. Ooh, writing. Uh, love swimming. Um, love to go outdoors. Uh, we love to go up to Tahoe, hang out with friends, play board games, video games, uh, just sit around and shoot the breeze. Awesome. Uh, what... What are words? What are words? That's why we have you in the world. Uh, what keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night? Ooh, gosh. The dichotomy of good versus evil in comic books brought to life. No, I'm kidding. Uh, let's see. What, what keeps me up at night? Oh, man. Uh, well, COVID, I think, keeps us up a lot, a lot at night. Everybody has different opinions on that, for sure. And, uh, of course, what's going to happen next in my book? I'll wake up at 3 a.m. and be like, I have a great idea. It'll keep me up until about 6. Oh, that's horrible and awesome at the same time. A little bit of both. I was expecting it to be Reaganomics or something crazy. Trickle down, just like rain. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the biggest geek you would like to have drinks with? Oh, gosh. I think last time I said J.K. Rowling, which would be pretty cool. Alex Trebek would be a good choice. Um, also, the guy who won Jeopardy, he seems like a whiz. Um, let's see. Ooh, Jason Sudeikis. He's uh, he, he's a he's an actor. He's a com uh, comedian. So he's been on like horrible bosses, Ted Lasso. But uh, he's kind of a closet geek. He'd be pretty fun to talk to. Perfect. I that's weird to me, but I don't know who he is. All right, fair. but that'll work. Uh, Apple or Android phones? Ooh, uh, probably Apple. Oh, uh, that's all I've ever had. Perfect. Well, we'll get back with you. Thank you, Patrick, for being here. And we'll finish these beautiful questions then. Excellent. We're taking a quick break. We'll be back with more Geek Speak, sponsored by Datto, the leader in disaster recovery, business continuity, and data protection. Keep listening to Geek Speak. This is Kenny McCormick, and thanks. In northern Nevada, there's a one-of-a-kind home that provides temporary overnight lodging when veterans or family members are receiving medical care in the Reno area, some from hundreds of miles away. Too often, overnight accommodations are a financial and logistical challenge. Stephanie Tanksley and her husband are veterans who come for treatment from Bishop, California. We were lucky enough to be connected to the guest house so that I could stay for 10 nights when my husband was in the hospital. So I was able to visit him every day. It was just a blessing. Veterans Guest House is privately supported by individual and community donations from people like you who recognize our responsibility to support our heroes. And no government money is received for day-to-day -day operation of the house. Please support this organization. The Veterans Guest House is a amazing resource for veterans. Supporting this organization is one of the best ways that you can donate your time and your money just to help our veterans and their families. Find out how you can help at veteransguesthouse.org. Slice the sandwiches every day. Made right before your eyes, the port of Subway. Could be a smoking number five or a classic number eight. Or maybe an Italian is your number one fave. Whatever you crave, prepare to fall in love. Slice the sandwiches, port of Subs. What do you get when you add creamy butterscotch chips to a delicious chocolate chip cookie? Your sweet tooth satisfied. Port of Subs adds rich butterscotch chips to our ooey gooey, warm and chewy chocolate chip cookies for a taste that'll leave you wanting more. Chocolate chip butterscotch cookies are at your neighborhood Port of Subs for a limited time. So stop by for one today. Get the taste you crave at your neighborhood Port of Subs or order online at portofsubs.com for takeout or delivery. Whatever your number you dream you know, slice the Sandwiches, pour the sauce. 
At a proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, we've been accomplishing happy feet for over 30 years. We offer a various range of shoe styles and sizes for both men and women. From all season shoes and orthotics to work boots and safety shoes, our professional and reliable staff possesses the knowledge to help you find the proper shoes to fit your needs. Hard to fit? Hard to find? A proper fit footwear is here to give our customers happy feet. We make people aware of potential foot problems as we're sizing their feet, suggesting the right arch support and guiding them to the proper shoes for their needs. Stop by a proper fit footwear at 4001 South Virginia Street in the Reno Town Mall today and allow the owner Mike Jones and our fabulous staff to find the perfect pair of shoes tailored to your specific needs. A proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, the home of Happy Feet, where comfort and your feet meet. Getting to know you. Let me tell you about America Matters with Eddie Floyd. It comes on every Monday at noon. Don't want you to miss it. That's America Matters with Eddie Floyd. Welcome back to Geek Speak, sponsored by Datto. Datto is the world's leading provider of cloud based software and security solutions, purpose built for delivery by managed service providers. Datto solutions defend against costly downtime and data loss in servers, virtual machines, cloud applications, or anywhere data resides. This is Kenny McCormick, and thanks for listening. Hey, everyone. Patrick, welcome back. I appreciate it. Glad you didn't run out the door because the door's right there. We'll see how it goes on the next uh, segment. Oh, okay. Well, now that I know you can't open a door, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> We had a little mishap this morning, or this afternoon. It, it seemed like it was locked. It was just needed a good pull. <laughs> oh, my God. Crack me up. Anyways, Apple or, P- or Mac or PC? Uh, Apple. Um, had, had Apple phones, but uh, for computers, Dell. Oh, okay. Oh, oh so, wait, sorry. Wait. My bad. That's a PC. A Dell oh, is a PC. PC. There we go. But Apple phone. Got yes, it. sir. Uh, Best of both worlds, maybe? No. Okay. The A word is an A word to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you like that? No profanity. <laughs> um, how old were you when you got your first computer? First computer? Gosh, I think college was my first personal computer. Uh, graduated high school, was headed off to college, and my parents bought it for me. We had a home computer, but, uh, you know, it was dial-up internet, all that. So Can I used it mostly sound? for writing. Can you make the dial-up sound? Uh, not well. <laughs> that's yeah, that's much enough. better. Yeah. DC or Marvel? Uh, DC Comics, Marvel movies. Oh, yeah. You're the one, one that agreed with me on that. Yeah. And then, ooh, have you seen that new um, Shang-Chi or whatever? I Shang- have. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? It it was a lot better than I thought it would be. Don't, don't get me wrong. I thought it, the commercials made it look pretty straightforward. It's just going to be, you know, ten rings, but then about halfway through the movie, turns out, magical village, dragons, all sorts of cool stuff. Right? So, yeah, turned out awesome. And then... And Trevor Lee Slatterly. Yeah. And then you had, oh, what is the sister's name? Her criminal name. I want to call her, like, uh, something Blade, but... Yeah, I can't think of her now. Well, she's a, a spoiler alert. She's a new Mandarin. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, whatever. Um... <laughs> Favorite board game? Uh, last time it was Clue, um, but since since then my friends uh, didn't know I liked Clue, and so they said, "Hey, we have like grown up Clue. It's called Mysterium, and it's like expert level Clue. It's pretty cool." Really? Yeah. Pretty neat. So your friends actually listened to the show? They did, and uh, all of them were very upset that they didn't know my favorite board game. Apparently, it never came up. So. What? Yeah. See, and this is why I do this. Random question leads to deeper friendships, right? (laughs) See, come join my show. You get better friends. (laughs) Just saying it out there. All right. So next, we're going to the news. Oh, no. Boring news. Okay. All right. So TikTok. Mm -hmm. They're jumping on the online shopping bandwagon. Okay. Isn't that just weird? strange yeah it's always been a place where you could just go watch some quick videos laugh maybe send them some money if you want to and then just move on yeah that's kind of what i was thinking 
excuse me, had a cough. Did the cough button work? <laughs> um, so, uh, on Wednesday, this today, earlier today, in the UK, I do want to point out it was the UK, uh, people were buying products directly on the platform, uh, tapping uh, to raise a social shopping experience. Uh, according to insiders um, from 2019 to 2020, the number of U.S. social e-commerce shoppers grew uh, 25% to 80 million. Uh, a number of which forecasts grew more than 100 million by 2023. Interesting. So in TikTok, I wonder how that happens. I mean, people are filming themselves, so maybe they tag an item in their video that they're sponsored for, and you can click a link, and it takes you to shop and buy it. I don't know. I I was really interested in that. Yeah. It, like they brought it up during the like I was reading the news article, going, "That's so cool." But then at the same time, because like I know my kids, they're like, "Oh, this little the girl's like doing makeup," and then it looks like a clown to me by the end. But so are they buying the makeup that the person put on? That that would be my guess. Is somehow something from the video is purchasable. Um, kind of dangerous waters though. There's you know kind of that culture right now of uh, that company doesn't say what I think they support. So does TikTok okay with everybody who's being sold on their company? Interesting. Interesting like, route. I think it's a great route because, I mean, I know me. I go there to watch the stupid dances. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, those are hilarious. Right. My uh, buddy and I did the uh, blinding lights thing for, like, hours to practice. Right. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. No. Um, yeah, because I love – there's one guy. He, like – they'll, like, be walking in the middle of the street, and then they'll start dancing. And those are the ones I like to watch just because, like, looking at people's reactions. Yeah. I just I love watching the people in the back, not the dancers. So how do you purchase it? I guess do you yeah. do you purchase like the dance moves? I don't know. Maybe it makes you a better dancer. Maybe maybe they'll like send you like the white print thing on the yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's like DDR, but in real life. Because yeah, when I think of TikTok, I think of you know stupid dance moves, challenges, challenges, pranks. Yeah, those kind of things. I don't think of shopping. shopping. Hmm. Who knows? But I guess it did really well. Good for them. So first in the UK, maybe headed here. Yeah. I'm just worried. Lock my kids down even more. Be like, no TikTok mm -hmm. buying. TikTok for you. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, and then, thing that I thought was awesome, Google actually sued alleged Russian cybercrime people. Interesting. Yes. wonder how they found them. Um, I don't know. That's... Did they Google him? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a... Um, the complaint named... Or I guess there was a huge other investigation. Uh, there was two complainants... Or com <laughs> Here, read that for me. <laughs> a complaint names two Russians and 15 unknown individuals said to be behind Glupteba a malicious botnet that has infected over a million computers. Yeah, so the botnet was originally found in 2011. All right. Um, are you familiar with what a botnet is? Uh, refresh my memory. Okay, so a botnet is basically you get um, a little program or something inside your computer, and you get a bunch of them in different people's computers, and they can all attack as a little network. Gotcha. LimeWire led to a lot of that, if yes. I remember right, growing up. Yes, correct. Um, so that's what a basic botnet is. Uh, this one specifically took personal data off of your computer, too, and dumped it. Hmm. So um, the, basically, you would get it through compromised websites, downloading sites, all the stuff that you probably shouldn't be doing anyways. Right. Um, and then they also found it in YouTube videos. Hmm. So that since Google... So when you watch the YouTube video, it kind of downloads to your computer? Um, what I'm understanding is it looked like there was like click ads or something that would pop up hmm. on certain videos. You click on blah, blah, blah. Oh, takes you right to a spot where you get the botnet. Yeah. Gotcha. So... Well, good for Google. 
Yeah, I was actually shocked and happy that they would do something like that. Yeah, well, a novel thought. So I wonder if uh, there's custody of the suspects or if they're just like, hey, coming after you. Oh, I'm thinking, well, how would you go after them? Uh, ex- extradition? Well, uh, Russia doesn't have extradition laws to U.S., I don't think. Yeah, that's kind of weird because the lawsuit was filed in New York. Oh, oh so maybe it's a hey, coming for you. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe. And it was unsealed on Tuesday. Google's rich enough. They could hire assassins. <laughs> well, I certainly, certainly hope not. Yeah, I hope not too, but assassins. Do it. <laughs> Hopefully they just stop making them. And... <laughs> Stay off Google. Um, and I'm not going to even try to say these Russian names. Like, mm, yeah, no. Because. Gluptipa? I don't know. This. <laughs> Dimitri? No, that can't be Dimitri. Yeah, it looks. It's it looks missing close. letters. Ah, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever these names are. Um, they're with modern technology. I forgot what I wrote. Anyways. <clears throat> Uh, third-party download sites. Oh, here. Uh, it was spread by third-party download sites, which I mentioned. You shouldn't go to those. Mm-hmm. If it's not a reliable download site, don't do it. Uh, online movie streaming services. Once again, most likely not legal ones, so don't do it. Um, and, and websites uh, fundamentally portrayed to be um, legal, uh, but I cannot talk today. <laughs> Basically, fake YouTube sites. Oh, so they're pretending to be YouTube. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So that's where it was not... Interesting. Well, yeah. good for Google. Lock, so, lock them up. Lock them up? Yep. Yeah. Take away their Google card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or cool their wrong. Google account, their G Plus account. Right. I think everybody got that taken away. I don't think that lasted. That's all right. The Google Plus? Yeah, I don't think they... Yeah. I know businesses still have them. Oh yeah, you're right. But really, yeah, didn't didn't make much headway against the Facebooks and the Instagrams of the world. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But we'll get back to you, and Excellent. we'll talk more about you and your new book. I'm excited. Oh. One in three adults in America have pre-diabetes, but most don't know it. To let people know it can be reversed before it becomes type 2 diabetes, professional basketball player Julius Randle is doing everything in reverse. I'm only dunking with reverse windmills. I drove the whole way to practice in reverse. I don't recommend it. This move's called the reverse shuffle. I do recommend it. And it took me months to learn how to speak in reverse, like this. <clears throat> Here's 10 almost for diabetes type 2 with living Ben has my mom. In other words, my mom has been living with type 2 diabetes for almost 10 years. So together, we want to say to the 84 million Americans at risk, exercise and healthy eating can help reverse prediabetes. Start by taking a simple one-minute risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. <laughs> Betty can't say that in reverse. Slice the sandwiches every day. Made right before your eyes, the port of subs way. Could be a smoking number five or a classic number eight. Or maybe an Italian is your number one fave. Whatever you crave, prepare to fall in love. Slice the sandwiches, port of subs. The holidays are a time for celebrating with friends and family, and Port of Subs six foot classic sub trays make holiday meal time planning easy. Our six foot sub tray for just fifty dollars will feed your family and friends with your choice of three different types of sandwiches, and with eighteen classic subs to choose from, everyone will have the taste they crave. You can even choose to have your subs individually wrapped. Order ahead at portofsubs.com for takeout or delivery. Whatever your number. This is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ, a Lotus Broadcast Station, the power of radio since 1967. Welcome back to Geek Speak, sponsored by Datto. Datto is the world's leading provider of cloud based software and security solutions, purpose built for delivery by managed service providers. 
data solutions defend against costly downtime and data loss in servers, virtual machines, cloud applications, or anywhere data resides. This is Kenny McCormick, and thanks for listening. So I'm just finding out right now from oh, good old Shanimal and little Patrick here that I'm just going to die of everything. Just letting you know. <laughs> no one's getting out of here live. <laughs> no, no. I've been playing with melted aluminum lately, so. You'll be gone in six months. Shame. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I leave my company to my wife. <laughs> Holographic well. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully it survives then. I love you. <laughs> All right. So normally I would go right into your book. All right. But because I'm stealing your time and I'm really glad that you're here well, because you. I'm excited to hear about your book and have you read a little bit, a little excerpt of it. Maybe. Yeah. Probably like a whole section, like 12 minutes would be awesome. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you work for Stuart Title. Correct. And when we sold our condo, we went through Stuart Title, or was it Western then? I don't remember. But the same company. Terrific. Uh, through you. Thank you. And I remembered how great your guys' technology was. We did a lot of little things across the board. We got called up by people. Great staff. Love them. Excellent. Good so, year. yes, of course. So... I want to get pick your brain about geekdom here. All right. Because I'm a geek and I want to know about your IT. Right. And so what's your admin passwords? No. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> Starts with a capital letter. No. Oh, okay. Good. And ends with an exclamation point. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <clears throat> um, how do you protect yourself as an organization from cyber crimes? Because I know that a lot of real estate is a huge hit right now. Yeah. Um, we had an in incidence with one of my customers. Um, wasn't really a customer at the time, so don't please don't think that's my ability of protecting your network. But he became a customer mm -hmm. who ended up transferring like one point three million dollars to the wrong account. Mm -hmm. How like how do you guys? Because I know that's basically what you guys are doing as a title company. How do you guys protect yourself from being breached that way? Right. So, uh, well, thank you, first of all, for the compliments. Really appreciate it. Uh, so in the title and escrow world, we have two separate parts. So the title side, those are the people, uh, they're looking at the whole entire title of the property to make sure it gets transferred from the seller to the buyer and no liens are left over. Their buyer's not paying for sewer bills. So as for the technology side, they're, they're using everything that's public record, looking through all sorts of systems. But to keep our clients safe, that's where the escrow side comes in. They're the side that manages both sides. They're the middleman or, or woman who makes sure that everybody's happy, the sale goes through. When it comes to actually protecting our clients, it's, it's crucial. Most people, when they're buying their houses, it's the biggest purchase they're ever going to make in their lives, uh, especially folks who are on their anywhere from their 20s until their 40s. That's the trend of I buy a property, now I buy a more expensive one, more expensive one. And at 40, that's when you start to buy a little bit cheaper properties by and large. So we got to protect the money, got to make sure people are safe. We are in control of their data, so we have their name, their, uh, the address they live at. In some cases, we have their social security number. If there's a trust involved, we might have information about that, so we've got to keep it safe. So our systems, internally, it's all about protecting customer data. Now, when it comes to the money, we've got two different systems that keeps them safe. So, for example, when you have a buyer and they need to make an earnest money deposit, uh, most of the time, they can just drop a check off to us, and there's nothing safer than a handoff from the buyer to the title and escrow company. However, we also have an app. Uh, it's called, uh, sorry, I just had a total brain fart, tried to name the wrong thing. Uh, it's called Zocom, like Rockham Zocom Robots. So <laughs> a lot of title and escrow companies have them, uh, different names, but ours is called Zocom, and it, it's just like a mobile banking app where you take a picture of the front of the check and the back, and it's sent in a completely secure insert techno jargon here, firewall, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it makes sure that it gets the check from the client who just took the picture all the way into the escrow account and never gets seen by anybody else. So keeps it safe, keeps it secure. And yeah, it's only $500,000. Maybe if you're buying a big house, it might be $4,000, but keeps it safe nonetheless, which is good. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Cause I like my Hermes money coming into my pocket when I sell places. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. And when I finally do buy another place, 
And if anyone wants to give me a place, my wife would love you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> gift. Gift tax. Gift. I'll pay the gift tax. All right. <laughs> um, I do, you know, want that security behind it. Right. Especially with all the personal identifiable information, or PII, is what we like to call it in the IT world. Mm-hmm. So don't steal my stuff, please, hackers out there. And next question. What should be people be looking for uh, in doing real estate transactions? Will you guys ever go out, like I was joking to you earlier, will you ever go out and like come to a person's house and be like, hey, I need that earnest money check? <laughs> no. no. No, we won't. So that's another good thing for people to remember. Uh, between their realtor, their lender, or their title and escrow company, nobody should come to them unsolicited. Everything should be expected. And that's what we like to remind people, especially uh, at the end of the escrow, Maybe you're a seller and you're getting some money because you sold your house for a good profit. Uh, you're going to need that money somehow. Now, of course, we can print a check for you and get it to you, but we're going to ask for your ID. If we don't ask for your ID, there's something goofy going on. Now, if you want it sent directly to your bank, we're going to need some banking information. But again, we're not going to email you. We're not going to text you. We're not just going to give you a call and be like, hi, this is Joe Bob, and we need your bank account information. We're going to have you come to our office. We're going to make sure. So uh, whether you're working with the lender, the realtor, or the title and escrow company, make sure you're meeting in person. Make sure that they're asking for information that way. If they ask over text, you're probably not talking to the right company. Okay, good. Yeah, that's what I thought was really funny because, like, um, when we sold the condo and they were going to give us our final payment, the whoever it was called us and was just like, can you come like, do you want it direct deposited, or do you want this, or do you want that? You need to come to the office. And we're like, why don't we just get a check then? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Nothing safer than a handoff. Right. I liked it. I thought it was funny. And at the time, I was like, huh? Just give me the money. I want the money. Yeah. Right? But <laughs> Cold hard cash. Right? Just kidding. We don't do cash. Why not? Or Bitcoin. Or unicorn. So sorry. You can't buy a house with Bitcoin? Uh, not right now. It's not federally insured. Sorry about that. It's okay. I don't have Bitcoin. I got dough. No. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of ETH. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you kind of already hit on it a little bit. Um, and I know you're not the techie person. You're the geeky person who writes books and sells to everyone. Knows a little bit about the IT, but not, not nearly enough. Not enough. But... Um, what type of technology does Stuart specifically use versus what makes you different and more secure and that could make a customer feel better to know to use Stuart? Yeah. So uh, as a benefit, Stuart Title, it's, a, it's not just a national company, it's international. So they put a lot of money into creating software that's used across the nation for every office to make sure the data is kept safe. So we, uh, are on our escrow side, we end up using a lot of that software. Also on the sales side, um, you know, sometimes as a salesperson, you don't think you have crucial information on hand, but uh, we also have secure systems that even though we have the realtor's name, their contact info, who they're married to, fun facts, we still keep it safe and make sure it's taken care of. We do the same thing for our buyers and sellers. We work with the app. We work through certified for their proceeds and just use all the technology at our disposal. Make sure people are taken care of. Perfect. I'm glad to hear that. And this is why anyone out there, we recommend Stuart Title as a personal advertisement, not as a American Media Matters advertisement. But as Kenny McCormick with Geek Speak, I say, use Stuart Title. Use Stuart Title. Oh, well, thank you, Kenny. I appreciate that. And it's, Would you like a business card? No, I'm uh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> uh, at least, you know, I'm not chanting, let's go Biden. But <laughs> I, I actually mean... Goes there to you a go. title. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I feel it deep down. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Shadowball's face when I said that was great. He kind of had that like, oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> 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 and trying to explain, let's go Biden, to, or sorry, let's go Brandon to my daughter. It, she's like, why is that on the mountainside this morning? I'm like, some people just miss the news. It happened at uh, one of the football games we were just at, and you could see half the people knew it, and half the people were like, wait, 
Who's Brandon? There's no Brandon on the team. <laughs> That's all awesome. <laughs> all right. So the real reason I have you here. Yes. Because I'm glad to hear about Stewart and all that. Great company. Just remember, keep working there, even when they change names again. <laughs> um, hopefully they don't do that for a while because it's a little crazy. They got, they, they got us. They'll take care of us. We'll be fine. Good. I'm glad to hear that. And Brock. Yes. Book two. Let's do the Vanna White. Oh. Oh. I wish I knew the Vanna White. Because huh? she had her own jingle, didn't she? I, I think so. Yeah. She always had her own style. I don't wear dresses, so I, I can't you know, match it quite right. Well, I'll try. obviously you identify as a male then. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, so it just came out. When was the actual official date that it was released? Official date was November 2nd. First Tuesday of the month. Oh, right on. First Tuesday of the month of November 2nd. That was a great Tuesday. Election day. Kind of bad timing. But Nevada didn't have any elections, so a lot less noise. Yes. So. And yet, you still haven't had your book signing? No. We are running into some shipping issues. No. Blame it on Brandon. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, the book distributor is based out of Tennessee. And, uh, you know, the, it, it shouldn't be in a ship. I don't know why it would be in a ship, but wherever those books are, they're just taking their time getting here. So we had a book signing set for beginning of December, and it's tentatively going to be sometime in the next couple of weeks, but we're still waiting on the books. So no firm date yet. Okay, well, let me know when that date is so we can push it out, at least through me, on GeekSpeak, because I'm, you know, I love the first book. Going on to the second book, I'm a failure. Ah, Even right. though you gave me a pre-release, I still haven't read it because I'm a failure. <laughs> I run two businesses. I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> you, you got kids and a wife. You're, you're fine. Yes. I won't hold against you too much. Yeah, I I should just get a divorce, read your book instead. Oh, please no. <laughs> <laughs> My conscience would never let me sleep. <laughs> good. good. Um, but tell me a little bit about your book. All right. So uh, for, for anybody yeah, 30 who's, seconds. Oh, 30 seconds. Uh, for anybody who's not familiar with it, Denbrock is a magical island. That sound weirder than I meant it to. Uh, it's got knights, dames, and it's timeless. Nobody, nobody ages, nobody dies. And uh, it's about the people who live there and how they try to protect it. Good. And there's kings, queens, witches, and stuff there, too. Right? All that good stuff. Nice awesome. little preview. Nice job. All right. So let's come back and get you a little more about that book dive deep in so we're taking a quick break we'll be back with more geek speak sponsored by data the leader in disaster recovery business continuity and data protection keep listening to geek speak this is kenny mccormick and thanks at a proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, we've been accomplishing happy feet for over 30 years. We offer a various range of shoe styles and sizes for both men and women. From all season shoes and orthotics to work boots and safety shoes, our professional and reliable staff possesses the knowledge to help you find the proper shoes to fit your needs. Hard to fit? Hard to find? A proper fit footwear is here to give our customers happy feet. We make people aware of potential foot problems as we're sizing their feet, suggesting the right arch support and guiding them to the proper shoes for their needs. Stop by a proper fit footwear at 4001 South Virginia Street in the Reno Town Mall today and allow the owner Mike Jones and our fabulous staff to find the perfect pair of shoes tailored to your specific needs. A proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, the home of Happy Feet, where comfort and your feet meet. At Northern Nevada Family Dental, we are proud to announce a wide range of advanced dental services by way of the Photona Lightwalker Laser. The Lightwalker Laser can efficiently and effectively treat most periodontal problems from deep persistent pocketing to peri-implantitis and a multitude of conditions in between. Have cold sores? We can inhibit the cycle of the virus and sometimes even prevent them from occurring. Do you have a snoring or CPAP problem? Through the amazing healing power of light, we can treat tissues inside the mouth without anesthesia, appliances, or cutting 
morning so that after just one treatment, most people sleep better and quieter that same night. By using the power of the laser intraorally, we can also smooth facial wrinkles and tighten sagging necklines, all without you having to be numb and there's no downtime. It can even be done on a lunch break. Through the FDA-approved Power of Light, these treatments and many more are now available at Northern Nevada Family Dental in Sparks. Have I piqued your interest? Give us a call at 626-7772 or visit us at northernnevadafamilydental.com. Destination Midtown. Experience the difference. Reno's premier shopping extravaganza. Everything imaginable and more. Midtown matters. Get down to Midtown. Beefy's, the best little diner in the biggest little city. Cheeseburgers extraordinaire, chili cheese omelets, and the best milkshakes in Midtown and Reno. Beefy's, try the full Beefy's menu and beer on tap. Beefy's, South Virginia at Arroyo. Midtown Reno, experience the difference. Get down to Midtown. Midtown matters. Charbecue the Butcher's Kitchen would like to thank every customer for your loyalty and continued support through these challenging times. Call for takeout and delivery of rib tips, brisket, ahi, tuna, roasted veggies, and much more. Charbecue is open from 11 to 7, Monday through Saturday, and delivers hot food safe and healthy. Call 499-5855 for details. 499-5855 Charbecue, as featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives. Get real. Get into Charbecue Reno. This is America America Matters Matters Media Media on AM 1180 KCKQ. A Lotus Broadcast Station. The The power power of radio since 1967. Welcome back to Geek Speak, sponsored by Datto. Datto is the world's leading provider of cloud-based software and security solutions, purpose-built for delivery by managed service providers. Datto solutions defend against costly downtime and data loss in servers, virtual machines, cloud applications, or anywhere data resides. This is Kenny McCormick, and thanks for listening. Vegas. Oh, sorry, guys. We were having this great conversation. Um, <laughs> that was good. But we'll have to finish that up afterwards, because obviously it's making Patrick uncomfortable. HR complaint. Let's see. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, where's HR? Yeah. Um, hey, Crystal, when you have a chance, call into the station at, oh, where's the phone number? <laughs> Uh, Patrick needs HR. Um, <laughs> I crack myself up. <laughs> um, I think that's why I do the radio show, is just so I laugh at myself. Oh, good. I like the sound of your own voice. And your own voice. Oh, yeah, because I listen to shows afterwards, and I'll be giggling the whole time, going, hey, you should have seen what I really meant to say. <laughs> uh, you and I have that in common. Oh, good, good. My wife made fun of me. She was like, you're a dork. You laugh at your own jokes. It's like, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> hey, that's the only way you know they're funny. Right? Who yeah. cares about everyone else? It make me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm selfish that way. <laughs> All right. So, we're talking about the bugs. Dembrock. Dembrock. What do we need to expect? Need to expect. Gosh. All right. So, the first one was all about learning about Dembrock. This one, you get to explore a little bit more about it, but... It's all about protecting it. You already know. You already know what you're protecting. So, uh, I it got described in one of the reviews as like Pirates of the Caribbean meets Sword in the Stone. So, there's a little bit of world adventure, some new cultures out there that help Dembrock, uh, but it's it's a murder mystery and it's a fast moving one. It starts off with a bang and it just doesn't let you go. Nice. Oh, before we get too in depth. Yeah, of course. So the original book you base it on a true story kind of sort of minus the mystical aspects of it obviously that's correct um and that was an island that segregated itself and i know i'm using the wrong word close it's a it's a little uh military depot and it's close to norway it's called the principality of sealand got it and you base it off of that, how they asked for all this help. Right. So a radio DJ, much like yourself, took up occupancy on the I'm little not military a DJ. Depot. Oh, well, right, right, right. right. Sorry. I don't flip <laughs> discs. I've never done that Mil- ever. Military, uh, ra- radio talk, talk okay. show. Okay, there you go. And uh, the countries wanted to take it away from him. Uh, different military folks were trying to take it. And uh, he insisted, no, I, this is my spot. I claimed it. It was no man's land. And so he started hiring. Uh, reaching out and hiring knights and dames to defend it. That's awesome. All right. So 
sorry, go back to yours. Oh, well, uh, to, just to jump right off that, that's how book one, that's what it's all about. Um, Island of Denbrock needs protectors, so people sign up to go do it. And uh, they sign up when they're kids, you know, young and aspirational and goofy and fun-loving. And uh, they don't find out until uh, they're 30, and they're not friends anymore, and they're all grumpy and cynical and a lot like you know, general civilization nowadays, it seems like. And uh, they get called to Denbrock, and it's not just a military depot. It's got magic and dragons and monsters and all sorts of cool stuff. And hilarity ensues. Yes. I love the book. I thought it was great. Good. Yeah. Thank you. And, of um, course, by the end, they save the day. Well, obviously. Otherwise, we wouldn't have book two. So, great. Um so, what do we expect in book two other than pirates? Oh, no, oh all right. <laughs> so, let's see. There are pirates. They're pretty cool. Um, they're, they're like vampire pirates. They, they drink metal, drink blood. Whatever they drink, that's what their body turns into. So they're kind of like ghosts. They're just organs, and uh, they need a body to get around. So, they boil metal, drink blood, and it makes them have corporeal form. So, they're kind of cool, kind of interesting. That is. Yeah. I hope they don't come to my office to drink aluminum. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> hey, they'll be gone in six months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another another big piece of it is uh, you find out in the first book that the king died. Um, and you assume that the witch that's attacking the island is the murderer. Well, you find out at the end she's working for the murderer, but it wasn't it wasn't her. She's just, just ruined it. Oh, you, you've read it. No, I haven't read it. Uh, the first one. Oh, the first one. Yes. Yeah, yeah Sorry. you're good. So, I thought you were talking about the second one. I was like, there's another witch. No, 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 no. So second one starts off, and the they call him the king's killer. Um, he's still at large, and he's going to kill again. There's another king that he wants to kill, and uh, it takes place over, as the book is called, the Center Solemnities, the two-week event. So from the full moon to the new moon on the winter solstice. It takes place every 30 years, and uh, the more people they kill, the stronger they become. So king's killer is at it again. Nice. Well, people like it so far, so that's a good sign. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I need to hear a little bit because I slacked and didn't read it. Oh gosh. All right. Well, what do we what do we think? End of the book? Beginning of the book? Uh, hey, Shanimal, your call. Pick a pick a page. Number. Page um, two sixty nine. Oh gosh, two sixty nine. That's pretty close to the end of the book. This is going to need a lot of editing, and a lot of bleeping <laughs> out. 269. Oh, man. Well, um, this has to do with politics. That's terrific. Yes. <laughs> so to, uh, to set the stage just a little bit, uh, the queen of Denbrock, she is our, our, the love interest of our main character, Nick, who is a knight. And, of course, they're not you know, supposed to be in love because knights and queens, uh, it's like conflict of interest. Love uh, it. So she is actively trying to seek revenge for who killed her king. It's been a long time, so she now has a new love interest, and she sent her knights across the world, and uh, the kingdom disagrees with her methods. So, uh, we will proceed. <clears throat> so, uh, the council had taken the front of the throne room. Master Milader had the indignity to take the queen's throne. Queen Corley was relegated to a rather small and uncomfortable chair in the center of the room. As Sivium filled the room, she sat, then decided she did not need to be in the hot seat, so she stood behind it, using the chair as a podium of sorts. The guests of the Arks, who, uh, you know, we meet throughout the book, had been barred from attending the Inquisition. This had intrigued Ma uh, this had intrigued Chancellor Omeo and offended King End, who sensed this secret meeting had something to do with the missing defender. Incensed, he demanded to know what was going on, only to have doors closed in his face. Queen Coralie couldn't help but feel this whole thing was a waste of time. Her future king was missing. Sorry. Spoiler alert. Her defenders would discover the truth at any moment. The knights and dames in the room would be sent into battle. The chefs would be serving up the feast, and she would just have to protect her kingdom and hope that everything went well. And yet, she reminded herself, this Inquisition, uh, during this Inquisition, she, would not need, she could not come across as impatient or condescending. She had heard the whispers, though she pretended not to, and must dispel any notion that she was the Black Widow Queen. Shall I continue? I think that was a great segment. Terrific. All right. Kind of sets the scene. Um, and then pol politics, of course, ensue. Not uh, not nearly as, as straightforward as our world's politics, I suppose. But kind of sets the scene a little bit. Bad things happen. 
And that's about three quarters of the way through the book. Wow. You're right. You do suck at reading. Yeah. I like your other person who yeah. you hired. Uh, that's that's why I stopped before I started reading accents, because uh, most of these people are British and Scottish and Afrikaans. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I, accents aren't my thing. Yeah. Unless we're going Arnie Schwarzenegger, but that's all I got. Oh, okay. Just backstory, people. He had he tried to read one of his own books once, mm -hmm. and I guess he sounded like a drunken Scottish person for everyone or something like that. I, I close. I was trying to do a Scottish voice, and my wife said I sounded Chinese at first, and then I reined in, and everything but Scottish. So got it. Yeah. So gave that up, and we found a different guy. His name's Peter Kenyon. It's based out of Michigan. And he is absolutely terrific. Oh, yeah. I love listening to his voice. I know that sounds very horrible to say as a male saying about another male, but he has a great voice. Oh, no. Half the time, because uh, like I mentioned to you, audiobooks, we got to do quality checks and listen to him. Half the time, I forget I'm supposed to be listening to it to make sure he spoke correctly. I just get sucked into the story. It's like, oh, wait, wait, right. I'm supposed to listen to this. Right? I mean, he, yeah, his voice is so soothing. Yeah. And Fair. it is on Audible's right now. Yes. So if Tennessee would, you know, stop shipping it to Nevada through a ship. Yeah. Um, you would have your books to do your book signing. And hopefully it doesn't make it so that everyone can get your book. But it is on Audible's. Right. Is so, there any other medium that they can get it on? I think it's also on iTunes, if I remember right. But Audible is pretty strict. If, if you're on Audible, they like you to stay just there. They don't like you to go to a whole lot of other places. So... And we like our we like our money. They give you a better cut, so that helps. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, because I love Audible. I think that is amazing. Yeah, it's a it's a great program uh, for not to plug Audible, but if you've never done Audible before, they give you your first audio book free. Yes, and they should get Dembrock. I definitely recommend getting the first one. Oh, there you go. So get the first one. I'm probably going to guess just by that little blurb that you read that I'm going to love the second one. I certainly hope so. Um, eventually, I'll read it. <laughs> probably not. I'll probably get the Audible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, nothing. no better way to listen to it than a great narrator. So Great. Definitely. Well, now, uh, books are already out. You can buy them online, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble. Perfect. All that good stuff. Awesome. Well, Patrick, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kenny. Hey, no worries. And remember, go to Stuart Title if you guys are selling thank your home. Listening to Geek Speak, sponsored by Data. This is Kenny McCormick, CEO of Celtic Fish, connecting our community one network at a. All right, crew. Let's get her done. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree. Remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, ah. you must...